How many lovers have you made today? Chapter 5. The Last of Us Anon is laying beside Blossom, the captain resting peacefully in his arms. He spends at least half an hour with his eyes closed in a failed attempt to relax. He can't take his thoughts away from Twilight. Everything is starting to move faster than he thought, and the way she's acting is throwing him off his original plan. His plan to just help her and forget she exists. His mind is a minefield under normal circumstances, and Twilight has managed to set most of them off like the clumsy pony she is. Visions of the past flash before his eyes. Questions about her motives and intentions. Does she genuinely wish to reform herself? Or does she want something far more sinister? She acts sincere in her regret over what happened, but is it just a ploy to get Anon to drop his guard? The facts frighten him more than his paranoia. He knows she's sorry and regrets what happened and wants to make things better for everyone. Anon isn't stupid. He knows he's on that list of hers. Perhaps the last one she wants to help. His emotions are all screwed up. He still hates her. That hasn't changed. But listening to her talk so casually as they walked reminded him of a time when she wasn't the monster he knows her to be. A pony that was curious and helpful. A pony that he may have once considered a friend. Anon pulls Blossom closer. He doesn't have a choice. If helping Twilight can make Celestia happy, then that's what he's going to do. Anon owes Tia for all that she's done for him. And this time, he'll do something she wouldn't expect. There's also the side benefit of Twilight being shipped back to Ponyville when she's done with this stupid stuff. But this is still mainly for Celestia. Anon nods to himself. Alright, he has a clear goal, and there's only one way to get there. A knock echoes from the door and breaks the silence. <sighs> Who could that be? Anon whispers. Twilight. Blossom answers. Blossom moves from Anon and sits up, as she keeps her gaze onto the door. She doesn't look happy, and Anon can't comprehend why that mare is here, of all places. There's another knock at the door. Um, Anon? Twilight calls out. Is this even his room? She mutters to herself. Uh, if you're in there, I, uh, I just need a moment of your time. Anon knows if he remains silent, then she'll eventually leave, but that goes against what he's trying to accomplish. One minute. Anon calls back. Oh, thanks, Celestia. Anon hears Twilight say to herself, sounding relieved. Anon looks at Blossom. Well, better get this over with. I'll be right here. She answers, still facing the door. Anon gets out of bed and answers the door. Standing there, nervously shifting her weight from one hoof to the other, is Twilight. She looks up at him, but quickly averts her gaze. What do you want? Anon asks, leaning against the door. I'm... sorry. I, I couldn't do it. Twilight can't face him to see that look of disappointment. I sat there at the table. The words were on my tongue, but I couldn't say it. Well, Anon isn't surprised to hear this, not in the least. The fact is, it took him years to build up the courage to say anything to Twilight. And even then, that was only with the support of his friends. In this rare case, Twilight is actually facing her support. So there was no one there when she needed someone. This leaves Anon in a tricky position. Now he's her support. This isn't what he wants, but it's the only choice available to him. <sighs> That's to be expected. Anon says, trying to ease her mood. If it'll help, I can come with you next time. Twilight snaps up to face Anon. Really? Yeah, just invite your brother and Cadence to that restaurant again, and we'll both talk to them. Anon hears a pony clear their throat behind them. Uh, make sure there's a place for Blossom, too. Twilight snaps out of her stunned daze as she nods rapidly. Yes, of course! So, what time is good for you? Tomorrow during morning court. I'm sure one, if not both, of the sisters will want to spend time together after then. So, it's best to do this when they're busy. Alright, I'll take care of everything. Twilight beams with a smile. 
Anon rubs his hand on the back of his neck, the two of them staring at each other for an awkward amount of time. So... yeah. Not knowing what else to say, Anon closes the door in Twilight's face. Thank you! Twilight shouts past the door as she gallops away. Anon's shoulders slump as he trudges back over to the bed and falls onto it. You're taking this seriously. Blossom remarks matter-of-factly. I have a goal and I intend to make it happen. Good to know. Blossom cuddles up to Anon again. This time, get some sleep. Your thoughts were keeping me up. What? Anon looks at Blossom, confused. <laughs> it's a joke. But still, you twitch slightly when you're in thoughts. Get some sleep. He'll need it. Anon takes Blossom's lead and gets comfortable, then closes his mind. Unlike before, his mind is calm, and sleep takes him easily. Nightmare lays on the floor of darkness of her dream, Luna panting heavily over her beaten form. All I wanted was silence! Luna hisses, the floor of the void wisping around her hooves and rising to look at her fetlocks. Yet you test me at every turn! Luna kicks Nightmare in the stomach, knocking the wind from her already labored breaths from her lungs. The bloodied mare violently heaves as she fights to draw in a breath. Ever since morning court, Luna had been using the corruption as a means of stress relief, trying to beat sense into her thick skull so that she would learn her place. Nightmare has taught her and belittled her one time too many. After catching her breath, Luna tries to compose herself the best she can. You are... Nothing! Luna says, pacing around the once mighty mare in the moon as she observes her handiwork. The immaterial tendrils of darkness dance around her hooves, wherever she steps like raging flames. Keep your silence, or this will become routine! Luna turns to leave, but a chuckle fills the dead air she left behind. Nightmare tries to pick herself up, but collapses on the floor in a broken heap. This does little to stop her chuckle as it turns to full-blown laughter. Luna looks over her withers to face the mare, and finds that Nightmare is looking right at her. <laughs> You're a scared little filly. Nightmare mocks. You think you're in control, that you possess power, but we both know that you're hanging on by a thread. Luna flares her wings, attempting to intimidate her, but she only smiles coyly as a result, noting the wisps of shadow churning about the diarch and clinging to her. It's only a matter of time before you lose yourself to me. Luna narrows her eyes. That will never happen. Not again. You are weak, Nightmare. I wonder what I ever feared in you. Despite her pitiful state, Nightmare cracks a smile. You can't lie to yourself like you lie to Anon. Luna's eyes widen, and Nightmare Moon can feel the heavenly brew of dark emotions stretching and shaping the void. Still your tongue, Parasite! Luna coldly warns. I have tolerated your insolence for long enough! Why don't you show him your true colors? Nightmare suggests, smirking. I'm sure he'd be thrilled to see that when it comes to being a monster. <laughs> you and I are one in the same. Though... She cracks her neck, blood trickling past her lip. I am touched by the intuition that perhaps you are far more practiced in cruelty than even I. <laughs> Oh, you make me proud. Luna's eyes fill with fury as all the fur and feathers on her body stand on end. I am not you! Luna shouts as she picks Nightmare up in her magic and slams her into the floor multiple times. Nightmare can only continue to smile as she has long since lost the ability to feel pain. Anything Luna does to her at this point is just for her own enjoyment. Luna stops her onslaughts as she lifts Nightmare up to face her, the smile ever-present. So much anger to relish in. Nightmare remarks. You haven't changed one bit. You're weak. The same little Lulu I've always known. She flips around in Luna's magic with worrying ease, causing the alicorn to involuntarily take a step back, staring daggers into the eyes as her smile, now inverted, deepens. 
It's only a matter of time before your loved ones too are victimized by your aimless passion. Your sister, your captain. Nightmare glares death into her host. Anon. Luna drops Nightmare, backing away as her blood runs cold. You're wrong. No, I never hurt any of them. Nightmare gasps in false sympathy. <gasps> That's why Anon is wary of you. <laughs> he knows better than to trust a vulture. Luna doesn't know what to say, her breath catching in her throat. That's not true. A voice echoes. Luna's head snaps towards the voice and finds Anon standing there. His brows are furrowed as he looks between Luna and Nightmare. Anon has no idea what's going on, but it doesn't seem pretty. Nightmare is beaten to hell, and Luna looks like she's one wrong word from a full-blown meltdown. He can already guess what's happening here after what he's experienced at the Hall of Doors. Still, he wasn't expecting to find this. Oh man, things are getting even more intense than before. Or violent, violently intense, whichever you prefer. Anywho, let's get on to our peaceful donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Zero Orion, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Matchfic 109, Jock TF, Darkside Raiden, Normals, Black Moon, Our Past, Del Sky, Saucer Moments, Do Hex, Brother Mordor, Number Call, Nightmare, Runes, Type 9852, Will Chris, Twinkie, Ride, Soul Shadow, Mon, Luigi, DA, Chance Request, Big Smoke 369, Bobcat, GGF, Murder Princess, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and love life to the fullest.